Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Let's simplify ACI. I would first like to thank all of the 600 subscribers for this channel for all their love and dedication towards uh, learning of the most popular data centers uh, software defined solution called Cisco ACI, which is also the application centric infrastructure. I, I started this channel in an attempt to make ACI easy to understand and digest for for the network engineers like me for whom uh, you know moving from a traditional networking to ACI was a huge leap in last one year we have been getting a lot of uh, personal requests for arranging an ACI learning module or, or training sessions for for all the aspirants you know who, who want to take uh, the, take a step forward so in this video today, I'll be talking about the high level training module that we have tried to prepare for every one of you who is willing to make ACI as a serious business option for their profession. So like every other uh, training module, we came up with this idea of creating different modules of trainings to uh, suit the different needs and requirements of the people now, many of you might be starting from the scratch and thus you know you might be looking for uh, the beginner or intermediate modules for aci training while the other half of you are uh, already working on aci and now looking towards the more advanced features of cisco aci and of course advanced module is the one that you might be looking for so let's move ahead and see uh, what each module would cover for ACI training. So starting with the uh, beginner module, we will be talking about how auto provisioning works or you may call it most popularly as a zero touch provisioning happens in Cisco ACI. Uh, this module will further cover the high level understanding about the ACI APIC architecture and how the internal database syncing happens. Then we'll be talking about the uh, L2 and L3 packet flow inside ACI and how uh, things uh, work internally to ACI, which is not visible to the normal world. Uh, we will be talking about the ACI logical components where, uh, you know, we will be uh, learning about the access policies and tenant policies and how things are configured. Uh, what, what each of these policies mean, which policy to be used when and when not. Then we will also uh, be doing the ACI D1 tasks like NTP, SNMP, Syslog, DNS, how to configure them, how things work in ACI. So all those things. Uh, so these are the topics which will be covered in the beginner module of Cisco ACI training module. Uh, talking about the intermediate module, uh, we'll be discussing about the common migration strategies that you might need to uh, learn more if you're uh, migrating from your legacy environment to ACI data center. We will also be talking about how you can fine tune your bridge domain uh, settings as if, if you have uh, gone through Cisco ACI, you must have seen there are numerous uh, different settings in bridge domain and every setting, every uh, option in the bridge domain can make a bridge domain function differently. So we will understand more on uh, what options to be used in which situation then we'll be talking about how l2 flooding and ARP flooding uh, is is taken care of inside aci we will be learning about the uh, external routing networking or you can call it l3 out which is the most common word for aci so we'll be discussing how uh, l3 out is configured between ACI and external router and and what are the routing protocols that we can use for that matter now uh, you can use any any uh, routing protocol between ACI to external routing device but we'll be talking about uh, how things work you know uh, how the policies are configured for OSPF how static routing is done uh, we will also be talking about and understanding about the external bridging network or L2 out or you know including what are the 
uh, different options of uh, configuring layer 2 layer 2 mapping uh, between ACI and the external device then lastly in this module we will be understanding how contracts what are contracts and how contracts are used and uh, how how they work Finally, uh, to make you an ACI expert, we have an advanced module which are uh, uh, which would be covering these topics. The first topic is RBAC. You might think that RBAC is, is not a very advanced topic. Why we have put this in advanced? Because, uh, because of the ACI's architecture, the normal RBAC is not implemented uh, very easily so there are small tips and tricks that you might need to take care of uh, when, when implementing RBAC so uh, we will be discussing and showing you how to do that in ACI then we will be uh, talking about and, and, and uh, doing uh, uh, the lab and theoretical sessions on uh, VMM integration so this VMM integration would be with uh, VMware vCenter for now uh, we will also be talking about the L4, L7 service graph uh, insertion uh, using ASA virtual instance in ACI. Uh, now this topic is something which we will be covering only the theoretical and conceptual part. Uh, we do not have lab available for this particular one where we will be talking about the multi-pod, multi-site and remote leaf. Uh, what are the different use cases uh, when to use which one and how the three are different from each other uh, then we'll be talking about uh, a little about the application center uh, which is uh, you know comparatively a new feature in ACI where you can just like your Android or, or you know phones you can install some applications some uh, Cisco applications or maybe third-party applications uh, to ease your day-to-day -day works uh, in in terms of uh, the viewing power in ACI so there are a lot of apps that that you can use which have made a lot of uh, other works in ACI comparatively easy we will be talking about and and uh, looking how the troubleshooting tools uh, work in ACI and and what all troubleshooting tools are there uh, we will be learning about how quality of service is configured in ACI and what are the different uh, uh, factors or different considerations that you should uh, keep in consideration when you are doing ACI with or without multiport. Then finally, we'll be talking about how L3 multicast is, is configured and how L3 multicast works in, in an ACI fabric. Uh, well there is nothing much to tell about us but seems like a lot of people get impressed when you tell them about uh, uh, that that you're cci certified so for us cci is just another certification and we like to impress people with our knowledge and expertise on the solution rather than our cci numbers now if you think that you are looking for a learning module for cisco aci with us you are more than welcome to drop us an email over uh, these two email IDs on your screen. With that, I hope to see you soon on the other side and subscribe to our channel for the upcoming videos on many other Cisco's uh, data center solutions. Till then, stay home, stay safe.